Okay, today we're working on a, a 2008 Impala SS. It's got the beautiful sideways mounted V8 motor, which makes it really tough to work on. Today we're going to be changing the alternator, which is right here. At a glance, it looks like a quick and easy change. But you'll see why it's a little bit difficult. I couldn't find this YouTube video on the internet, so I'm going to do my best to hopefully make one that's halfway decent. Step one, disconnect the battery. I've always been told to do the ground wire, but the ground wire is a little tougher to get to in this particular car, so I took the hot wire off. I don't know if that makes a difference. Hopefully it doesn't. Just to give me some extra room, I took this structure bar off and disconnected the uh, fuse panel so I could move it out of the way so I could get a better look at what's down in there. The difficult part about this is the serpentine belt, which is incredibly long, incredibly intricate. Okay, so the next thing, and this is the crazy part, is that I have to take the passenger side front tire off. So, I'll be back. Okay, now we got the tire off, and there's this plastic piece here. It has three of these small little plastic things that hold it in. Basically, you unscrew it a little bit until you can get it with your fingers, pull it out, and then this piece will pop out. You don't necessarily need to replace these, but you don't want to lose them. At that point in time, you can wiggle this plastic piece. Now, it still has one attached back there, but the amount of effort to take it out isn't really needed for what we're about to do. This right here, that is the belt tensioner. Crazy way to get to it. Now, I will include a link to the to YouTube video that showed me this, because he does a better job of explaining it than I do. There is a tool you can get from your GM dealership that costs $100 that nobody keeps in stock. Being that we don't have $100 in three to four weeks to wait for it, we're gonna take a, your average pry bar. You wanna get it all the way up in there until you get it on the top of this spring, which is really tough to show. Once you get it on the top of the spring, then use the body, see how I'm pulling it down? And that's gonna loosen up the tension of the belt. Now let's go back up to the top. Okay, so once I undid the tension, I unhooked it from this wheel right here, which that's just a idler, idler wheel thing that it goes around. And I'm gonna kind of leave it intact so when I take the old alternator off and put the new one on, I'm gonna try to avoid anything happening to the serpentine belt that I have to redo anything. So next step, disconnect the alternator. Okay, if you look very closely, this is this is one of the incredible things about these. Okay, there's this blue section right here. We have to slide the blue section down and then we'll be able to take this off. So I got this little bitty screwdriver and I just pried it in there to see how it slid down. Now I can just squeeze it and unplug it. Pretty cool, huh? Okay, the next thing, no, the blue piece is still in there. The next thing is this wire on the back and then the four bolts that hold it in place. The four bolts that hold it in place are a 15 millimeter, okay? This one right here is a 13 millimeter, which, you know, this is just one of those situations that I'll just use a wrench. Okay, now with any of these wiring harnesses, especially when you're dealing with a car like mine that's got a whole bunch of miles on it, you don't want to move the wiring harnesses any more than you absolutely have to, okay? Okay, so we got that piece off. Pull these two over out of the way. Like I said, being careful not to move them any more than you absolutely have to. Okay, so the two in the back are really tough to get to. So I'm gonna have to use a, uh, a ratchet on those. The two in the front, they're easier to get to. So I'll break these. Just like with anything, you wanna break all four bolts loose first. Now in the back, it looks like I'm gonna need a small extension. Okay, I've been at this a while. You know, I have two short extensions, and then I also have a deep dish. When you're dealing with something like this, any combination might be exactly what you need just to relieve some of the stress. You wanna avoid the deep dish socket as much as possible, but sometimes they do come in handy. In this particular case, this teeny tiny little extension here seems to be the way to go. But as you can see, that's almost the same as the deep dish socket. So either way would work. But deep dish sockets aren't as strong as, as ooh, now look at that. 
Now we're hitting, so that back one's going to be even more tricky. Oh, we might be using a wrench on that back one. Okay, luckily in this case, this one's coming loose with my hand. Okay, which I'm happy about because a lot of times when you can't really get to them, you have to rely on the strength of your hands to get them out. You know, resting's a bad thing sometimes because when you rest, you'll forget where things came from. But when you rest your muscles a little bit, it makes it easier to not slip and have an accident happen. Because accidents are not cool. Okay, so now we'll get this one. See, with this one, there's barely enough room for me to get my hand on it. But it is loosened up enough. I can get that out. See, the back ones are the difficult. So once I get all four of them started, I'm going to focus on the back ones first. Okay. Now is one of those cases that, you know, I have it. I spent the money on it. May as well use it. Okay, you notice I left these front two bolts in. The reason I did that was plain and simple. I wanted to compare them and make sure they were exactly the same. Because a lot of times your front bolts and your back bolts may not match. And you don't want to accidentally mix them up. And then when you put it off, put it back on, you have catastrophic failure. On the flip side, I learned watching um, American Restoration. You know, these, these new phones can take lots of pictures. Take pictures before you start, look at them as you're putting it back together, and that, that's the way you don't have to remember. Okay, so it's coming loose. Okay, so I want to make this as simple as possible. So I'm going to get the new alternator. Okay, so I got my new alternator here. Um, I went with the CarQuest version. A lot of that had to do with price. I don't have any recommendation on what kind of parts you put on your cars. That's totally up to you. Particular, this particular case, I priced them. The price was right, and CarQuest is a pretty reputable parts parts store that's been around for a while. So right off the bat, you want to inspect it, make sure it appears to be the same as the one that you're about to swap out. And so far, so good. They look to be identical. And it now is the part that requires some finesse because like I said, we want to avoid having to deal with the serpentine belt. As you see, I'm gently holding the serpentine belt, praying that nothing happens there. I'm gonna pull the old alternator out, push the new alternator in place, get my belt right back where it was. Okay, so as of right now, the only thing that the belt is not attached to is this pulley right here. Okay, so at this point in time, as I said before, we want to start all four bolts before we really tighten any of them. And if you can't hand tighten it, you're probably doing something wrong. Because as you saw that one in the back here, I took all the way out after I broke it loose because there wasn't enough room between the firewall and the bolt for the ratchet. So my only other option was a wrench, which um, I've learned from good mechanics over the years that I've associated with. Don't underestimate what you can do with a wrench under the hood of a car. You'd be amazed at what you can do with a wrench. You know, ratchets and sockets, they all come in handy. Air tools are beautiful. But when it gets right down to it, you know, as you saw me with the, the wire on the back of the alternator, sometimes a wrench is just the way to go. Okay, so I'm getting the ones on the back hand tight, ones on the front hand tight. Okay, and I did try my best to make sure that even though it didn't appear to matter, 
I tried to make sure I put the, the bolts back in the holes they came out of. All four of them appeared to be the same, which I'm pretty sure they are on the same deal. A lot of times your eyes can play tricks on you. One might be just a little bit longer, a little bit shorter. Threads might be a little different. You know, your best bet is just to uh, keep them where they were. Okay, and like I said, I'm gonna... Okay, I'm just gonna cinch these down. Now, being that I took them off, I know how, I, you know, I kinda had a feel of how tight they were. Okay, everything's got a torque specification, don't get me wrong. But you don't wanna bear down on it too hard. That's why I said a lot of it is I use, how much effort did it take me? to take it off and I try to exert that same amount of effort to put it back on. I've had uh, torque specifications do me wrong before. So the other thing is really nothing is like so tight that you're grunting. I mean there are certain things that stuff like this you just want it as tight as it was when you took it off. Okay, alternators always come with a new nut, so that's something you definitely want to use the one that it comes with. Hook this one back up. Washer first, and the nut. Okay, lock washers make it easy. When the, when the washer flattens out, you're tight. Okay, but if you notice, I got my finger holding the wire still so that the wire doesn't creep up on me. Okay. Okay, protective boot back in place. I will say that was the hardest part about figuring out how to take this off. The one YouTube video that I found, they actually broke this clip in the process of taking it off. Don't get me wrong, you can still go back on, but it's not 100% right. Okay, so we got our alternator tight. All we got left now is the serpentine belt reinstallation. Okay, which takes us back. So at this point in time, I'm going to pause it while I clean up some of these tools because I don't want to lose any or drop any down into the engine compartment. So we'll be right back. Now we're back to the tensioner, which I can tell you this has to be the toughest tensioner I've ever dealt with. Okay, so I got, I, I'm six foot tall. I got one hand down here. And now I'm coming up to the top with the other hand. I'm gonna loosen it up. Oh, and it popped off. Okay, so we'll redo that one. See, now is when you just take five and you rest, John. Oh, there we go. Okay. So I'm looking at it and it appears that everything's right. Okay, but before I start putting it back together, I'm going to fire it up real quick. And uh, hopefully the serpentine belt won't fly off. So let's see what happens. Okay, so now, even though we're not gonna put it all the way back together, we have to hook the battery back up. So the battery, this one has a weird terminal. It's actually a 10 millimeter. Now this I do like to use the air ratchet for because it frees up one hand. Okay, if you worry about your air ratchet being too powerful, you can always just crank the air down. Crank the air down to only 20 pounds. Because with this, just like with some of the others, you got to hold the wiring harness still. And with your battery terminals, you want them to be tight. Okay. So, appears we're good. Okay, so, next thing. I'm going to put this back in place. Not going to screw it down, just put it back in place to make sure the belt doesn't hit. Oh. 
Well, all right. It looks like we successfully installed the alternator without interrupting the serpentine belt. Okay, some of the things that I took off that I didn't explain already, that I didn't explain already. Okay, we got our battery hooked back up. Have our fuse block back in place. Most everything on this car is metric. I don't know if there's a metric size for 7 sixteenths. Um, but if there is, I couldn't find it. This one's 7 sixteenths. I would almost recommend using a nut driver, which is basically a screwdriver with a socket head, because you're tightening down something that's made out of plastic. Okay. Okay, and then you got this piece here, which you want to make sure that your wiring harnesses are all routed where they need to be. Okay, so now we're on to this piece. There's three bolts. It's kind of hard to screw these up because there's one big one, two small ones. You always want to take the time to make sure that the bolts that you took out go back in where you took them out. Okay, that's just a, a good rule of thumb. Like I said with the alternator, even though the bolts all look the same, okay. The other thing is you want to look, and if you can zoom in on this, you know, but you see how you can see where the bolt was. So on this end, you know, just aligning this exactly how it was, you know, look at where the previous mark is from where it was. Okay, air tools are a beautiful thing. If you notice, I'm hand tightening first. The reason for that is because the air tools cannot be your friend, or not your friend if it's cross-threaded. If it's cross-threaded, that air tool is gonna make it so you have deeper and bigger problems, and your day will not get better. reason I have all these different extensions they come in handy just to make it a little easier Pause it. okay just like I said if you're cross threading air, air tools are not your friend on the same deal they can mis be misleading as far as when you think something's all the way tight like I said, the best rule of thumb is to go by with how hard it was to take off. Now, I mean, if you had to yank and put a pipe on it just to get the thing off, well, then you might want to look at using a torque bar to put it on. You know, auto parts stores have torque specifications they can give you. If you buy one of those Hayes books on the car, you can actually, it has every torque specification you can imagine. But as I said, I've, I've gotten into trouble using a torque wrench before when really hand tight and feel was the best way to go because you don't want to strip anything out these screw directly into the body it's not exactly the uh, the type of threads that are made to withstand a lot of torque okay so now we're gonna move on to the inner fender because it looks like we got everything here biggest mistake that people make they leave tools under the hood um, I can tell you I have a really cool swivel swivel extension 3H drive that I got that I found down inside from a mechanic that worked on my car. I'm sure that the price of that tool was in my bill, but um, either way, I acquired a new tool. But, you know, you can damage things as you slam the hood when there's tools laying there, you know. So keeping track of your tools when you get when you finish it up is important because a tool laying in there can get lodged in your serpentine belt just stuff can happen that you don't want to have it happen so we're going to go back to putting the inner fender well back together and this is where i'm going to tell you it's all about the details if you've ever taken your car to the shop and not been happy because whatever reason they changed your rear shocks and didn't put the carpeting back in your trunk right you know it's the little stuff like this that makes it all worthwhile so yeah Okay, now to this plastic piece. I did end up taking this third one out to get it all the way out, just because it was in the way. And I wanted to make sure that I got it back in correctly. Okay. You know, just like with anything, it's plastic, so be careful with it, because you don't want to break it. Okay, and then once you line it up, 
Let's get the light back up here. Okay, once you line it up, the cool thing about these clips, you just slide the clip in. Okay. Now it's got a Phillips head on it, but that's more to take it out. You push it right in. Okay, and then to the hard one, which is the one that's way back here. If you, shine, if you can see up in there, it's tough to get to. So that if you ever notice every screwdriver kit comes with a really short screwdriver with a fat handle. That's actually, this is this would be the, the purpose for it. Okay, so there we go. Okay, I got that piece in. And the screws in. Okay, so now that's back in place. So at this point in time, the only thing left is for us to uh, put the tire on, take the jack stand out. If you notice, there's a jack stand there, along with a floor jack. I have a really nice floor jack, but I don't trust it 100%, nor should you, because um, you don't ever know what might happen. And um, that pretty much is going to conclude it, because all that's left is putting the tire on, closing the hood, and putting the tools away. Um, I did this video because I couldn't find one. I will include a couple links specifically on dealing with the serpentine belt. And I, I might just link the person that broke that alternator clip so you can actually see that happen. Um, but good luck to you if you choose to change it. We all have to take our, shop, our cars to the shop occasionally, but the more things we can do ourselves, the better off we are because we all have our limitations, including myself. You know, I'll get into it pretty deep, but you want to know when to stop. Save the money on the alternator so that you can spend it at the shops for your rear brakes when they don't want to work right. Thank you much. Test drive complete. Everything appears to be running. We did a successful install and it took us, what, probably about an hour and a half. So, money saved. Now we just need to wash it.